Hi again, everyone. I thought I'd try and do my mountain scene tree ring pour again. Um, trying to duplicate this background. And you can see I've got a lot of that really nice stripy white. And in the last one I did, I didn't get the end result I desired. And I think even in the video I said, use whatever white, it doesn't matter. And I don't think that's the truth at all. Because the Amsterdam Zinc White that I used did not give me those nice big bold stripes that I would like to try and get. And I think I recall that I used Artist Loft White last time when I made that painting. So I'm going to try it again. Let's see how it goes. I'm starting with a 12 by 12 canvas. I'm making sure that it's level, of course. Just a little something something. Today I'm going to use the Creative Inspirations Payne's Gray, all-time fave, and Artist Loft Sap Green. And so for this pour, I'm going to try the Artist Loft Flow Acrylic uh, White. <laughs> I've mixed up all of my paints with two to one um, Floetrol to paint, thinned just enough with water to kind of give it a nice so I like it kind of thick for this so I'm going to kind of try and show you the consistency let's see let me stir this up here so see how it's dripping off the stick but leaving a mound a couple seconds and they're all kind of that way and if I take a look at my blue here same kind of can't really tip that one as much because it's so super full and you might be able to see it better in the white. I'm not sure. Let's see. Hopefully you can see the kind of consistency that is. Um, this is a 12 by 12 canvas. I have two and a half ounces of paint in each cup for a total of seven and a half ounces of paint. Um, yeah, so I did basically one and three fourths. Uh, ounces of Floetrol to about three-fourths to seven-eighths ounces of paint, roughly. And I mix up a little bit extra, like just an ounce or so. Same ratio of the dark, because I want to kind of create a wet canvas here. So I'm going to put that down. Oops, of course. And I don't really need this to be super smooth and not create any kind of pattern because I just, I'm going to pour over all of it anyways. So I'm just going to use my fingers to spread this around. Again, just making a wet canvas here so that these gesso canvases, the paint can kind of get stuck on it. And I really do want it to kind of flow when I start stretching out that tree ring. I'm going to just get the sides too. I like to get the sides because sometimes when you're tipping, you'll miss some of them. And at least, I mean, I can go back and touch up the edges anyways afterwards. But this way I don't get a bare white that I'm trying to touch up. So let's just finish going around the sides here. I got these cheap little medicine cups to go underneath and hold them up, and they're crushing. It's a different brand than I normally do, and they're kind of collapsing underneath this. Struggling a little bit. The struggle is real. There's always something, right? All right, I'm going to wipe my hands off so I don't, so the paints don't slip out of my hands. I'm going to get a nice big cup here to start layering my paint. And I'm going to put the white in first. Just pour it down the side. I guess I really shouldn't have put the paint down on the canvas before I poured my colors. Or, yeah, into the cup. Layered my cup, I should say. I'm not very good at this talking yet. I'll get better. 
It just looked kind of non-important talking to fill the time while I'm pouring <laughs> the paints because it's not very exciting. I always pour from the side because I want it to kind of just sit on top as much as possible, not really drop to the bottom. For this pour, okay, almost got that Payne's Gray. I love that color so much. Okay, and finally the sap green. Okay, it's a nine ounce cup. You can see it's pretty full of paint. I really would like to have this tree ring. I really want the streaky white. That's what I'm hoping for. And I also want, the last one I did, I had the um, the blue folded over on top of the green. Not sure if that was because of the, maybe the blue is a little thicker than the green. I'm not sure. But so I hope I get a little more green down here. So take two of this pour. Just start with a real straight pour in the middle till I start getting some blue. A little bit right now, so okay. Here it really comes though, here comes the blue. Just a little wiggle. And here comes the white. Jiggle, 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 wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. But as I get closer to being having it all poured out, I just stop jiggling because I don't mind that being real tight. Plus, I'll probably spaz and make some really big oops moment. Okay. I said in my last video, I'm not very good at getting that middle just right. I always mess it up. So I just keep a little barbecue skewer handy and just come in and fix that spiral. So, good as new. All right, so I want to take a look at this. Where do I have the most green? Probably here and here's the white. So I think how I want to tilt. Oops. That picked up. Is I want to tilt this green off anyways and keep most of this. And that's going to hopefully be my streaky sky this time. So let's start just moving the paint around. I don't want to tip it off yet. I want to see how it's moving. I don't see that went right over the green again, so the blue must be heavier. So I don't want that to happen. Oh yeah, I'm getting my streaky white, so for this effect, I think I definitely prefer the Artist Loft white as compared to the um, Amsterdam zinc. I get, because that's what I want. I want kind of those, I'm going to call them cloudy, streaky things. Come on down here. Let's play nice green. I think I'll stop right there. I can just kind of get that to nudge over. And I want to bring some of this paint weight back. And then I do want it to hit the weight of the paint to be right in that corner. So if I start going down, I notice it's a little too far over to one side or the other. I'll move it over a little. And that's flowing pretty well. And I'm just going to stop there and kind of pull it over. And let's nudge it back. Because what I'm trying to create is the idea of maybe kind of a mountain and sky or forest and sky. And if I can get some of this white to go off the corner, that'd be great. It 
it's a little bit too white. And then we got some of that blue streak coming back. I really like this better, I think. Let me stop right there. Maybe bring this down just a little bit. Kind of get the idea of like either during the day, some clouds, or at night I've got some moonlight coming out. I like it. So, oh, here, let me get that light out of there. I'm sorry about that, everyone. Good grief. So, I think the Artist Loft gave me this streaky effect. Oh, good grief, let me. I have ruined paintings before where I go in and I look at something and the paint dripped right off of my glove into the middle of my painting. So I try to remember to always wipe my hands. <laughs> so I really like this streaky, stripy white. That's what I was trying to get. And with the Amsterdam, um, I'll bring it over and show it to you. I didn't get that at all. I mean, it's nice, but that's the one I did with the Amsterdam zinc white. And it's pretty, it's a night sky. But it's not the effect I was going for. This is kind of cool. I like it. Either maybe a snow blizzard or a moonlight or clouds, but I kind of like the idea of a sky and forest terrain or mountain and so what I will end up doing is letting this cure for about a week and then uh, test it out and see if I think it's dry enough for me to uh, put a gold leaf stencil of a bear with forest and maybe some birds coming out of it. I've got a couple that I do that I really like. I'm going to go ahead and Kind of check these sides, make sure that I can, everything's covered here. I did have the blue down, but down here where it's green, I want to have green, right? That makes sense. Get this corner a little better. Hey, check this side. And I'll check the back. I don't want to be on camera though. Okay, so that looks good excited. Now the last thing I'll do is just kind of go under here and catch any drips so it doesn't dry with a bunch of drips. Okay, let's kind of take that off the bottom. And uh, voila! Thank you for watching. I hope you picked up a little bit of information, maybe got a little bit inspired yourself. I started paint pouring like in March of 2019 and I've just been fast and furiously trying to learn as much of every technique that I could. I really like this one. I'm happy with how it turned out and I hope that you will watch the video, like the video, and subscribe to my channel because I'm going to try and do little things pretty regularly and I don't mind uh, giving a little bit of information as I go. All right, thanks again. Bye.